everybody, it's Neil, one of the chefs with the National Pork Board. It's grilling season, so today we're going to get outside, fire up the charcoal, and throw something on the rotisserie. We're going to make some traditional style tacos al pastor, but we're going to make them untraditional. We're going to do Indian spices, and instead of tortillas, we're going to use some flatbreads, and I'll show you a quick and easy way to cheat and make your own at home. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the pork cut, marinated, and set overnight, and then we'll get going. First thing we're going to start with is making the marinade to go onto the pork. So we're going to do traditional tandoori style marinade. So what I'm going to start with is some food coloring. If you don't want to use red food coloring, you don't have to, it's not a big deal. Uh, if you have achiote paste, you can use that. Even some pomegranate juice, something that'll just give a little bit of the, the traditional red color. I've also got yogurt here. You can use Greek style, you can use light. Doesn't really matter. This is Greek. I've got garlic and ginger. And then here I have a blend of garam masala, Kashmiri chili powder, black pepper, clove, cardamom, coriander, cumin, and some salt. So that'll all go in. Got some cilantro. and fresh lemon juice. So with the lemon juice and the yogurt, the two acids, you have citric acid and lactic acid, it's gonna help tenderize the meat. So we're just gonna whisk this together And there we have our tandoori marinade. The next step is to get the marinade onto the meat. So I'm using pork shoulder. This is a whole shoulder that I got, a whole boneless shoulder. And what I did was I sliced it really thin, about an eighth of an inch thick. If you don't want to cut it all up, if you have a international market, usually they have this in the case that you can go find it thinly sliced. And we're gonna use shoulder because this is gonna cook for several hours on the rotisserie. So I don't want it to dry out. So using something that has a lot of good connective tissue, a lot of fat, it's gonna help render and baste as it's spinning on the rotisserie. So I don't wanna use something that's lean. I want something that's gonna have a lot of flavor, a lot of fat. These ends are gonna crisp up when the fat hits the flame. So I wanna use something that's got a lot of richness to it. Again, we've got our marinade here. So pour that over the top. And then you just wanna massage all the meat into the marinade. Now I did use Greek yogurt, so my marinade is gonna be a little bit thicker. If you use a lighter yogurt, it's gonna be a little bit runnier. Make sure you separate as much meat as you can. Make sure that everything is coated. So marinade is on. I'm gonna wrap this in plastic and let this refrigerate for at least 12 to 24 hours, depending on how much time you have. But the longer you let it sit, the more flavor it's gonna have. The next thing we're gonna do is prepare the pork to go onto the rotisserie. If you don't have a rotisserie, you have some long skewers, you can just certainly skewer the meat, whatever works best for you or whatever equipment you have. But because I do have a rotisserie, I'm gonna use it. One thing I like to do is I have this piece of venting that I just got at the hardware store and I've lined it with plastic wrap, put some foil on the bottom just to make sure in case there's any gaps, the juices don't run out. And I like to layer it. So I like to push all the meat in and I layer onions in between so that I get a nice stack cylinder of meat and this is just for me, what I prefer to do on my rotisserie. But like I said, you can make skewers out of this. You don't need to necessarily do this step, but I just like to do it for uniformity and it holds everything nice and tight together. So the first thing I do is I just start putting meat and I like to lay it because I'm gonna have my rod go through the middle. So I wanna lay it flat 
and as even as possible so that I get a nice stacked layer of meat and onions. So like I said, I'm just gonna keep building this, this cone essentially, because I am gonna do this horizontally. I'm not doing vertically. So I want this to be as even as possible and as tight and compact as possible so that I don't have meat flying all over the place as the rotisserie is spinning. So throw some onions in there and then just keep building layers of meat and onion and we'll just keep building it until we're at the top or I'm out of meat, whichever comes first. But I should have enough in here to fill this cone nice and tight. So I'm just gonna keep building this until I get to the top. Okay, I have my cone all the way filled up with meat, been packing it down, layering in red onion in between. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the freezer just for about an hour, just to really set it, because when I take it out, I don't want it to fall apart. So the one other thing I will say is, since I did use Greek yogurt, which is a lot thicker, I don't have marinade running everywhere. It's held together really well because of that viscosity. So using Greek yogurt, you wanna have is quite a mess. So I'm just gonna cover this up. And I'll put this in the freezer for about an hour just to give it a little bit of time to set. And the nice thing about the metal can is that it's gonna help insulate and keep it cold. So about an hour, I'll take this out and we'll start the next step. Okay, my meat has been in the freezer for an hour. You can see it's holding its shape, but it's not frozen. And what I've done here is I've laid down some cling film and then this is call fat. So call fat is lined around a lot of the intestines, a lot of the organs, and it's a great way to wrap meat that's lean, um, something that you wanna add a little bit of flavor to, and some fat, some moisture. And what happens is when you cook it, it shrinks and tightens up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in call fat. Again, not necessary. This is just what I do because it's gonna help hold the meat together while it's on the rotisserie. So what I'm gonna do is grab the cling film and I'm gonna pull it up and then wrap the meat over. Almost like a little package. And then we'll take the cling film and we'll roll it over on itself. All right. So once I have that set up, I'm just gonna make one move with the cling film. And this is really gonna just tighten it together. There we have it. So my cone is ready to go onto the spit. So I'm gonna pull the cling film. Oh. And I'm going to insert the rod from one end to the other. Try and be as center as you can. Grab one set of spikes. And we'll clamp it down. Grab the other. And we'll push it together. All right. So my cone is ready. I have my charcoal dumped out. I have the rotisserie in. All the charcoal is lump because I want it to burn long and hot for a long time. It's probably gonna take about three and a half, four hours. And I'm actually gonna put a piece of peach wood just to add some smokiness, a little sweetness. Turn it on. And I'll come out and check it. I'll probably have to add coals two or three times, maybe. Um, but we just let it go. While we have the meat outside cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and put together a small little cucumber pico de gallo that we can put on top for when it comes off the grill. So I've got cucumber. Tomato. 
equal parts. Red onion, jalapeno, cilantro, and squeeze of fresh lemon juice. Get salt and pepper. Just give it a quick mix. And just transfer it to a serving bowl. And then we'll put this on top of the tacos after we pull the meat off the grill and make our naans. We're gonna make some crema using yogurt to go on top as a finishing sauce. Again, this is Greek yogurt. I have some preserved lemons. So these are lemons that I packed in salt for about six weeks. And I'm just using the rind. You can see that they've, they've become almost like candy, just the way that they move. So just packed in salt, in fridge, six weeks. So I'm gonna throw those in. Pinch of salt and pepper. And just make it smooth. And there we have it. So this is our preserved lemon crema and we'll put this on at the end of the taco. All right, our pork has been cooking for about three hours now, and I took off all the call fat. Once the meat sets up, you don't need it anymore. It's just to help, help hold it in place, let some of the fat stay inside the meat. And uh, we've got about another hour to go, so I'm looking for 165 on the internal temperature just because I did skew it, and so just from a food safety standpoint, I wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through. I could start slicing it off right now, but I really want it to get nice and caramelized. So I'm going to let it keep going for about another hour and we will be ready to go. What I'm going to show you here is a quick way to make your own naan, we can call them. Uh, you can use tortillas, you can buy store-bought naan, uh, you can make puri, you can make roti, you can make chapati, whatever you'd like. Uh, but I'm just going to make some quick naan here uh, using these tubed biscuits. So these are the southern style not the flaky ones. And all I'm gonna do is just cut them in half, make them into a little bowl, dip them in a little bit of flour, and then just roll them up. So I'm gonna put these on the grill once the, the meat is, is cooked so I can just put them in cast iron or some form of, of pan to uh, cook them at the last minute. And these are gonna be puffy and doughy, but they're going to be really good. And because they do have all the, the fat in there, I don't need to brush them with ghee afterwards. Typically that's what you do when they come out of the tender oven, but we don't need to do that because they have so much butter in them. So I'm just going to roll these out and I'll lay them in between parchment and I'll just keep on going. My meat is done. Took that last hour and now I've got the charcoal still lit. I'm going to cook my naan. So we've got a carbon steel pan, something semi-thin that can take a lot of heat. Just lay the flattened tortilla in there. It only takes about a minute. And you don't have to grease the pan because there is so much fat in the biscuit dough that it'll fry itself. Let's flip it over. Do another 30 seconds on that side. and repeat. So I'm just gonna keep doing this while the meat rests and we will be ready to serve dinner. Here it is after four hours, we've got our tandoori seasoned rotisserie pork. And we cooked over charcoal and some peach wood. We've got our cucumber pico, our naans that we made out of store-bought biscuit dough and our crema. I know this seemed like maybe a lot to do, but you can easily just do this as skewers cooked over the grill but because I have rotisserie and I had free time, I thought that I would take the time to do it. So I hope you found this fun and easy and something that you might want to give a shot to. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.